G'day, thanks everyone for joining us on The Green Left Show. My name is Alex Bainbridge from Green Left, and uh, you will have noticed that this is the first episode of The Green Left Show that we've produced for a little while. We are committed to ongoing production of The Green Left Show, and more episodes will be coming out on a regular basis. This show is recorded on stolen Aboriginal country, and we pay our respects to elders past and present, and we also pledge our solidarity with ongoing struggles for justice for Aboriginal people, always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Before we get underway, I want to remind everyone that the best way you can support Green Left, if you like the work we do, please become a Green Left supporter. It's a monthly financial contribution, starts from just $5, very modest. It's the best way to show support for Green Left as well as to receive the content that we produce. There's information in the description for how you can do that and we would love to have you on board as a Green Left supporter. The election has been called in Australia and there'll obviously be a lot of focus on that, including at Green Left. We have uh, produced a number of videos about the election candidates and we will be producing more. And of course, there's a lot, of, lot more information on the, and analysis on the, on the main Green Left site. So please stay tuned for Green Left for that. There, are, there is a link in the description below. But one issue which is perhaps not getting as much attention in the election campaign as it should is the issue of freedom for Julian Assange. And that's what we're gonna be covering in today's episode of the Green Left Show. Uh, I am here with John Shipton. Uh, John is Julian's father, and he's going to be discussing uh, with some of the issues that, um, you know, about this case. Before we dive into that, I do want to say there's links in the, in the description below uh, for how you can support the, the Free Julian Assange campaign, and also uh, the movie Ithaca, which John was up in Brisbane to, um, to, to speak at the, at the opening, um, at the, the, the premiere screening. So into the interview with John Shipton, Julian's father. Uh, thanks very much, John, for joining us. And I just want to say the first question I asked John was to just explain the current legal situation for Julian, where things are at with the campaign and with his life. Uh, his, uh, the defence, after the courts heard the American appeals, the next in line is the defence's appeals. And the defence have uh, appealed against the fullness of Baritza's judgment back in uh, January last year uh, because uh, it gave to the United States every other aspect of the extradition charges excepting health. That meant that public interest, uh, that meant also that they accepted the uh, mm, testimony of a convicted paedophile and fraudster, um, Jordarsson Jord from, uh, from uh, Iceland. Uh, also, they ex accepted that the treaty obligations between the United Kingdom and the United States didn't account for uh, uh, political uh, extradition. Now, that's really important because the treaties state specifically no extradition for political charges. And as you know, the charges are the Espionage Act, which is clearly political. So those three major areas um, were uh, acceded to by Judge Baraitza and now the defence appeals against those uh, and that is comes before the High Court. The High Court makes a decision as to whether the defence appeal can be heard. Then it says yes or no. If it says no, then the, the matter moves to the European Court of Human Rights. One of the things that strikes me about this whole situation is the way I often describe it with the legal system, the process itself is the punishment. Like we could get to a situation in how many years' time, Julian could be completely vindicated by the courts, but he's still been punished all of these years uh, in prison right now. He hasn't been found guilty of anything. Do you want to comment on that? Yeah, yes, I see that phrase around a bit, but I, it doesn't get much sympathy from me, even though it's probably in one way an accurate decision. I, I think a more precise decision is that given by uh, Nils Melzer, that three states have embarked upon uh, the a torture of uh, Julian Assange, and that extends from 
2011 until now. That's uh, moving into its 14th year. Now that, the, four, the 14 years, the boundaries of that uh, arbitrary detention are decided. The outer boundaries, the 14 years of arbitrary detention are decided, have been decided by the United Nations Working Group on Arbitrary Detention in its two, February 2018 declaration that Julian Assange was being arbitrarily detained and ought to be freed and given compensation. That's 2018, February. Since then, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022. So you can see it's a lot more than punishment by process. It's a sadistic, continuous sadistic torture of a publisher and journalist. Do you have any comments um, to the Biden administration given that Obama decided not to try and extradite Assange and this is a, a Trump era extradition attempt. Biden could simply direct the, the Justice Department to, to end it. Do you have any comments about that? Yes, I don't know, you know, in, to make an example, in the case of Australia, there's been five prime ministers, four governments, three foreign ministers. The policies regarding Julian Assange remain the same with nuanced movements uh, in the case of Malcolm Turnbull and Julie Bishop, they made inquiries uh, of Jeremy Hunt and Mike Pompeo. Um, and in the case of uh, uh, Prime Minister Kevin Rudd, he made uh, some sort of comment, you know. So their minor um, involvement of this government, uh, in the Australian government, but the policy overall continues unabated. I assume that the institutional momentum and structure is the same, is similar in the United States and this persecution continues as a matter of institutional interest. Similarly, uh, in the United Kingdom, there's been, uh, from memory, one, two, three, four governments uh, of both colours um, and the Julian has appeared before now 21 judges and it'll rise to 23 uh, after the current hearing comes and each of those sorry the majority of those judges are from senior courts superior courts so you can see that similarly to Australia it's an institutional problem in my view so uh, I can't see an individual uh, politician such as President Joseph Biden saying, oh, look, I'm sick of this, let's fix this mess, mess up. He would probably say, this is a bloody mess. What are you people going to do about it? How are you going to fix this? It's not getting us anywhere, it's going nowhere. I expect that the Prime Minister Morrison or Prime Minister Anthony Albanese after the current election will make the same inquiry but with greater force. Fix this mess. The fixing of it is very simple. The arrangements between Australia and uh, the United States have demonstrated twice that these things can be managed. For example, uh, Kylie Moore Gilbert, she was uh, held and sentenced to 10 years uh, prison in, in Iran and arrangements were made that successfully returned her home. So, and in that case, it required the, a prisoner exchange of three prisoners uh, in, in Thailand. They were imprisoned in Thailand, an Australian aeroplane flew to Thailand, picked up the prisoners and then flew to Tehran and then flew back and picked up somebody else, I don't know who. Uh, so you can see that the potential 
to resolve Julian circumstances there. It is creating the will that's our job. I think it's very easy to solve. It's just a matter of building up the pressure to make it possible. And I think your comment at the rally the other day about the number of politicians that have joined uh, the Assange parliamentary group is probably an indicator of the amount of pressure that's building. Would you agree with that? Yes. Uh, uh, I'd just like to, to um, say that the parliamentarians that have joined the Assange group, founded, by the way, by Peter Wish Wilson and Andrew Wilkie some years ago, are attentive to the concerns of the electorate. So you, with, in this metaphor, you see that 29 members of the parliamentary Assange group and others who are on the periphery of that group are a tip of an iceberg that spreads right down, right through every strata of Australian society. The intellectuals, the, the uh, politicians, the institutional bureaucrats, um, and people like who I used to do, carpenters and plumbers and builders and IT professionals and uh, journalists like you. So that those stratas all hold up the tip of the iceberg, which is the parliamentarians. Yeah. It's important to remember that, I think, because it's us. Yes, yeah. I think coming from an activist point of view, I feel very strongly about that. Like people often look towards politicians, but no, it's actually us. the grassroots yeah, campaigns us. that makes the yeah. difference, yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm wondering if you might make some comments about the media. I, uh, <laughs> I, I've got this dim memory from my, uh, from my very early days as an activist at the time of the first Gulf War in 1991 reading a report about an academic study, and of course I'm sure I've missed some of the nuance perhaps of the time and, the, and the, the, the fog of memory since then as well. But the take-home message I got from that was that at the time of the 1991 Gulf War, there was you know, broadcast media, saturation media coverage of the, of the invasion of Iraq. But this study found that the more TV people watched, the less they actually knew about the dynamics of what was going on. Um, you, know, the, you know, the underlying dynamics in the, in the, the war in Iraq. And now we've got this, um, this war in Ukraine, and I feel like the same thing. There's a media um, uh, saturation coverage. Um, but, in fact, I think one thing I saw recently was that there was more, more coverage of Ukraine in the US key networks than at any, any of the other previous conflicts the US has been involved in in the last few decades. Um, and it feels to me like war crimes has been one of the key things that WikiLeaks has exposed. You spoke about the positive role that WikiLeaks has played. Into that context, can you make any comments about the media, both their coverage of Julian's case, but also uh, what I would consider to be a failure of their, you know, WikiLeaks has exposed more than any of the other mainstream media networks. Of the uh, of the war crimes and shenanigans going on, can you make any comments about about that about the media? Well, the the editor of uh, WikiLeaks um, has been banged up now in one way or another, moving into its fourteenth year as we spoke. Which editor is putting their hand up for that sort of treatment? Not many, no. So the the oppression and intimidation that's precipitated from the treatment of Julian Assange and WikiLeaks and others, Ola Bini, um, indicates to us that it's successful. Yeah. They don't want us to know. I don't want to blacken all of the media because um, most of the major legacy media has spoken against the extradition. New York Times, The Guardian, The Times, The Telegraph, The Sydney Morning Herald, The Age. Also, I want to give some understanding to other media managers that 60 Minutes 
uh, production of Stella Morris had a million views. The 60 Minutes production of Julian and Stella's wedding has 700,000 and it'll crack out at a million. So media managers realise now that the interest is there amongst us. You know, this is a concern of ours. A million views is no light weight, you know. And uh, so media managers were, had best uh, understand for their own benefit that in two ways. One is that once you're oppressed, well, you're in, you know, your prestige is gone and the government just rings you up and says, turn left at that corner and if you don't, I'll pull your fingernails out. Um, so resisting the oppression is one thing and also understanding that we, the people, will assist the resistance of that oppression because, as you can see, a million people viewed the, the uh, 60 Minutes program on Stella and Julian. I mean, get with the program. It's the same for the politicians. You won't lose any votes standing up for Julian Assange, but you'll get some. And it'll get you over the line in some cases. I mean, I, I can't understand it. Why are they running around saying, Julian, Julian, bring him home? I mean, you know, th that doesn't mean to say that it would be successful to get Julian home but it would be successful for them and the beginning of a process of bringing back some credibility between the people's concerns and the actions of government, which at the moment are like an abyss, you know. It's got a real credibility problem. And I think that's the reason, one of the reasons why, that newspapers now worldwide are so homogenous because the government realises it's got some sort of, governments realise that it's got some sort of credibility problem and that their solution to this naturally is to be more oppressive and have another rule and, you know, lock somebody up for 14 years. Well, I don't think that's satisfactory. Is there anything else you'd like to say to the Green Left audience yeah, before no, we finish I up? Yeah, no, just look, thanks, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends, thanks. It's only with, uh, it's only, uh, actually, we've been friends with the Green Left Weekly since 2011, and, and they've constantly supported it. They must have a sensibility of, of, uh, justice and of concern uh, amongst the people and amongst those that, that support uh, Green Left Weekly, otherwise they wouldn't run it. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thanks again, everybody, for, for joining this Green Left show. Thanks again to John Shipton for, uh, for you know, sharing his time with us and for giving the information about Julian's campaign and, and his thoughts. I do want to remind you before you go, if you like our work, the best way to support us is to become a Green Left supporter. There is a link in the description below. You can also become a supporter of Green Left on Patreon. Um, we've made our main focus in encouraging people to, to become a Green Left supporter directly, but if you want to support, if Patreon is a place you like to support, um, please go to Patreon and, and find, us, uh, find us there. And uh, at, at once again, there's a link in the description below for how you can support the free Julian Assange campaign. Thanks everyone, see you next time. Thank you.